to thank everyone for coming to this very important meeting of the City Council as we do the people's work. At this time, Council Members, if you would, please stand for the invocation, which will be given by Councilman Curtis Edmonds, and then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dr. Edmonds. Gracious God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for waking us up and having us to be in our right minds. And as we deal with the business of the city, we pray, God, that we do it with integrity and that we'll do it and be apple, be understanding those who might come up to share some information with us. We ask that you bless them as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Members of City Council, please indicate your presence electronically. Okay, Madam Clerk. Seven members of City Council are present. Okay, members of City Council, you have before your consideration the minutes of a call meeting of July 12, 2016, and a regular meeting of July 12, 2016. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Take it. We have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically. The minutes are adopted 7 0. Okay, I want to apologize for our tardiness. I know the hour is late, and we want to try to, as soon as we can, get out. Hopefully, History will be made tonight, and this country will have a presumptive nominee. It's, been made. it's already been made that uh, Senator Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton is the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party. So I think that uh, deserves a, a round of applause, regardless, regardless of what your politics are, the first female in this country. So it speaks volume. So with that... Um, and that's right. And we've got a vice presidential nominee who is a mayor, um, state city. senator. He also worked in city council, and he was in Congress, I believe, as well. So uh, Senator Tim, K Tim Kaine has, uh, has, has, has... That's exactly right. <laughs> Look like I'm on the right track. And, uh, and Madam Clerk, before I turn it over to you, we've got a special guest in the audience. Councilman Meek has his beautiful daughter here. If you would please stand, and Danny, you want to do the honors of introducing her. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is my oldest daughter. She's 18. Um, her name is Alyssa. I also, I have three other ones. They're not here, but it's not enough people to keep those three uh, corralled around. So <laughs> she wanted to come see how this works. So. Welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Ladies and gentlemen, city council rules require a limit of up to three minutes to speak. As you approach the speaker's podium, you will notice a timer. At the beginning of your three minutes, you will see a green light. Two minutes into your remarks, you will notice a yellow light. At the end of your three minutes, you will see a red light, hear a beep, and we ask that you conclude your remarks at that time. While speakers have an opportunity to address council on matters of public concern, all, all comments should be made in a manner that respects the seriousness of the forum and should not be made in a belligerent, sarcastic, or demeaning fashion. A speaker who fails to observe this basic rule of decorum will be deemed out of order and not allowed to conclude his or her comments. City Manager's Report 16-231. Adoption of an ordinance to appropriate the sum of $30,000 in the technology classification of the FY 2017 Grants Fund budget for the Portsmouth Public Schools. Vision Principal Enhanced Quality of Life in Lifelong Learning Community Electronic Roll Call. And I have a registered speaker, Ms. Donna Sai. Good evening. My name is Donna Sai, and I live in the Woodbine Farms neighborhood. 16-231 is an ordinance to appropriate $30,000 in the technology classification for the year 2017 grant fund budget for the Portsmouth Public Schools. The source of the grant funding is from the Virginia Public School Authority Educational Technology Note Series 16 grant. This means that the treasurer of the state of Virginia is selling a note or obtaining a debt to provide money for the school to purchase handheld multifunctional computing 
devices. The school is required to pay a 20% local match of $6,000. The goal of the Educational Technology Grant Program is to improve the instructional, remedial, and testing capabilities of the SOL in local school divisions and to increase the number of schools achieving full accreditation. Proceeds of the Series 16 notes are provided to establish a comp computer-based instructional testing system for the SOL, develop an internet-ready local area network capability and high-speed internet connectivity at high schools, followed by middle schools and then in elementary schools, and establish a five-to-one student computer ratio for high schools, followed by middle schools and then in elementary schools. This is a misguided idea of the school to think they need these instructional and testing systems for students to take SOLs. The public schools are promoting debt for what? All these computer devices are creating a growing number of children at risk for relationship impairments. Public policy has not kept pace with the reality that one or two unsupported adults are often unequipped to successfully rate their young. Whether educators are ready for this responsibility or not, they clearly must play a leading role in responding to the needs of children adrift, which is caused by electronic devices. Stop spending money you don't have. Thanks for listening. Thank you, ma'am. I'm clerk. <clears throat> we have no additional speakers. We're in need of a motion. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Are you voting electronically? This item is adopted 7-0. Okay. 16-232, adoption of an ordinance to appropriate the sum of $658,567 in the instruction classification of the FY 2017 grants fund budget for the Portsmouth Public Schools Vision Principal Enhanced Quality of Life and Lifelong Learning Community electronic roll call. And I have a speaker, Ms. Donna Sai. Good evening. My name is Donna Sai, and I live in the Woodbine Farms neighborhood. 16-232 is an <coughs> ordinance to appropriate $658,567 for the instructional classification for the year 2017 grant fund for the Portsmouth Public Schools. This money was lent to the school division from the state's grant, which was unused as of June the 30th, 2016. $239,700 was lent to the school division from the state for the Virginia Preschool Initiative. The school wants the city to defraud the state's grant and use the money for the year 2017 for technology, staff development, and other non-payroll needs. $197,454,000 was lent to the school division from the state for the Early Reading Initiative. The school wants the city to defraud the state's grant and use the money for the year 2017 for technology, staff development and other nonprofit needs. $7,864 was lent to the school division from the state for SOL algebra readiness. The school wants the city to defraud the state's grant and use the money for instructional supplies, additional tutors, and other non-payroll needs. The total of $510,027 was loaned to the Portsmouth School Division for a specific purpose. Now the administration wants the city council to defraud the state of money that taxpayers have had to sacrifice to pay. Not only that, the students have been denied the help they need to supplement their education. This is a prime example of greed. How can the people of Portsmouth trust those we have elected and appointed to safeguard the education of our young? Thanks for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Clerk. We have no additional speakers. We're in need of a motion. Move adoption. adoption. Second. We have a motion. And a second, and you'll be voting electronically. This item has been adopted 7 0. 16 233, adoption of an ordinance to accept and reappropriate to the PPS the preliminary amount of $3,675,345 of unexpected funds and $1,605,285 in preliminary encumbrances prior to adjustments for financial reporting and external audit purposes. 
into FY 2017 general fund, vision principal enhanced quality of life and lifelong learning community electronic roll call. And I have a registered speaker, Ms. Donna Sack. Good evening, my name is Donna Sy and I live in the Woodbine Farms neighborhood. 16-233 explains that the Porson Public School Division received $144,174 uh, for their school budget for the year 2016. The school division has spent $137,947 uh, of their budget as of June the 30th. This leaves $6,226,000 six $206 in the Portsmouth uh, public school unspended funds. In the report, it states that the estimate for the June 30, 2016 unexpended funds is $3,675,345. The school division wants 100% of this money to spend on $1 million to pay principal and interest for the energy lease loan due December the 17th, 2017. Uh, over a million dollars for a one-time bonus for employees, $634,983 for first college and dual enrollment, $376,000 for paving projects throughout the school division, $100,000 to replace a water cooling tower at Waters Middle School, $78,000 to be paid to the city for Craddock Middle School bleacher replacement, $62,000 to pay for EMC software equipment and services technology to upgrade and expand existing infrastructure and facilitate backup and recovery all data and system configurations such as VMWare. $41,000 to pay for special education service expenses. This money is from Medicaid reimbursement funds. Over a million dollars is the preliminary amount of claims prior to the completion of the financial reporting process and external audit. The addition of all these amounts equals five million two hundred eighty six hundred and ten dollars and not five hundred and two thousand six hundred and thirty dollars as reported in the ordinance to be signed by the clerk. Sixteen dash two thirty one is an ordinance to appropriate thirty thousand dollars in the technology classification for the year twenty seventeen grant fund budget for Portsmouth. The school is required to pay twenty cent percent local match or six thousand dollars. So how is this money figured into the whole? Lastly, the public school wants to pay a one-time bonus to the school employees over a million dollars. We have a pay scale problem in this city. That means we have two dysfunctional systems operating in our city. One is the school and one is the city. Both systems have failed to provide a method for all employees to obtain cost of living raises on a biannual basis as well as step raises in employment. All raises need to be across all departments, not just a few. No wonder the morale is so low in the city. There is favoritism running rampant in Portsmouth. Thanks for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Clerk. We have no additional speakers. We're in need of a motion. Move for adoption. Second. We have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically. This item is adopted 7 0. Let me, let me just say before we go to the next item, I want to applaud the school system and the superintendent for an outstanding job this year. Uh, they presented their financials in a very detailed fashion and the encumbrances as well as the reappropriation and the justification for it. And this is, uh, uh, again, to be commended. I think last year we got this report around September. And um, again, they're doing what we asked them to do. There are great things going on there. And I think we need to recognize that following the state model and all of those types of things. So uh, I don't see the superintendent here, but he was in the work session where we went through all of that in detail, him and his finance person. And, and so again, they did, did an outstanding job and I want to applaud them for that. All right, Madam Clerk. 16-234, adoption of an ordinance accepting a grant in the amount of $551,037 from the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services and appropriating said funds in the FY 2017 grants fund to provide funding to operate local probation and pretrial services in the city of Portsmouth, vision principal, enhanced quality of life, electronic roll call, and I have no speakers. Move adoption. We have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically.
This item is adopted 7-0. 16-235, adoption of an ordinance accepting a local government challenge grant in the amount of $5,000 from the Virginia Commission of the Arts and appropriating said funds in the FY 2017 grants fund for use by the Department of Museums to support youth development programs. Programming. Vision Principal Lifelong Learning Community Electronic Roll Call, and I have no speakers. Any for adoption? Second. We have a motion and a second, and you'll be voting electronically. This item is adopted 7 0. 16 236, adoption of a resolution in support of early childhood education, vision principle, lifelong learning community, enhanced quality of life, and a robust and prosperous economy. Electronic roll call, and I have no speakers. Move adoption. Second. I put my light on. Oh, but I didn't put my light on. Mayor. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Madam Manager. Uh, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, members of council, I'd like to call to um, the council's attention that during a previous city council meeting, Dr. Whitaker provided two documents to staff, and one was a stairway to success supporting early childhood education application, and also a letter on the state of black America and requested um, that the city manager come back to council with information relative to both. Tonight we're coming back with information as it relates to the application that we're putting forward uh, and we're still gathering information to come back with a presentation uh, on the state of black America and looking at the benchmarks and measures as it pertains to our city. But uh, uh, we're excited about the opportunity of submitting this grant. The deadline for submission is um, August the 23rd. Um, the Deputy City Manager, LaVorce Pace, and his team are spearheading this application process, and we feel very good about the opportunities that are ahead. So we'd like to thank Dr. Whitaker. All right. Thank you. Madam Clerk. We're standing, Dr. Whitaker. You need to vote. Yes. This item is adopted 7 0. 16 237, adoption of a resolution to approve the FY 2017 performance contract for the Department of Behavioral Health Services. Vision principle, enhanced quality of life, and efficient service delivery. Electronic roll call, and I have no speakers. Second. We have a motion and a second, and you'll be voting electronically. This item is adopted 7 0. New business 16 238, boards and commissions. Councilman Edmonds. Yes, thank you. Mayor and members of the council, I offer for you for your consideration and move the adoption of the following appointments and reappointments to boards and commissions Guy McGrath to the Portsmouth Port and Industrial Commission and Vincent Jones to the Community Criminal Justice Board. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second, and you will be voting electronically. All right, very good. The boards and commissions have been adopted 7-0. 16-239, items submitted by council members. Uh, Mr. Meeks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, uh, I was elected right at four years ago, and um, me and uh, Bishop Edmonds, we have right at five months. And, you know, you always want to make sure you make the right decision for the 96,000 people here. Well, I think this council made a mistake um, several months back. Uh, and tonight I want to put forth, we have a lot of uh, big court cases coming up. I think it's going to be some... Um, uh, rough waters and we got to make sure we got decision makers to provide us with the proper legal counsel so tonight I'm going to ask uh, for this council to uh, release or uh, fire the city attorney okay that's not a second so that fails thank you mr. mix dr. Whitaker yes uh, yes, this is for um, a city attorney. Um, at our previous uh, meeting, uh, I believe it was last month, 
Um, there was discussion regarding the um, Virginia State Bar Association and need to know that we need to make a public motion at this meeting. Uh, Dr. Whitaker, <clears throat> um, I sent counsel a message to um, come and uh, meet with me this week about that particular matter based on the information I have. Um, I do have some information to share with you all uh, this week with regard to that particular matter. Okay, so um, can we can we um, have that information sent to us confidentially it, uh, on attorney-client privilege? Uh, I, I can certainly talk to you about about that uh, at the conclusion of this meeting. Okay. I guess the larger question, uh, Mr. Attorney, is if we can go ahead and authorize him to do that with exception of the information that he has and if there's something that keeps us from doing that so we don't have to wait right. to the next meeting. Would that be an order? May right. Mayor, if I, if I might. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I would just ask the council's indulgence uh, on that particular matter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Dr. Water? That's it. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you, sir. I have a couple of items. Uh, number one, in front of each position, um, there's a cute little bag of candy um, and a brochure from uh, the Portsmouth Community Concerts. Last night I attended their 78th anniversary uh, annual meeting, and they sent these gifts um, to each of you with many thanks for the city's support for community concerts over the years. So enjoy your little box of candy, and to the citizens, please um, take a look at Portsmouth Community Concerts um, website and Facebook page and keep up with the wonderful programming that they bring not only to Willett Hall but to other venues around the city. Um, before we meet again, I will remind you that um, the weekend of August 5th and 6th is first weekend. It's the first weekend in August, so that means that in addition to the normal farmer's market, uh, and weekend festivities downtown. There's also a concert in the courtyard on that Friday night. And on that Saturday, August 6th, we have a recycling event going on at the Lowe's um, at Victory Crossing from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. And um, because it's the Coast Guard's birthday and we are a Coast Guard city, um, for those of you who like to run, there is a the Road Rage Cutter 10K and the Coast Guard 5K, neither of which the mayor and I will be running in. Um, but if you are a runner and would like to participate, um, you can find the details on those uh, runs at RoadRageEvents.com. Um, and lastly, but not least, I'd certainly like to welcome back Johanna Summers from the Virginia Pilot, who's been uh, AWOL for a few months while she raises her brand new little girl. And I just want to say welcome back to Johanna. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moody. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd ask uh, the Vice Mayor, we, we toured a pretty good-sized boat uh, uh, that most people would refer to as a ship. Would you like to expound on that uh, tour that uh, myself and the uh, We did. Uh, city I, I, how could I forget? Um, yeah. And you've heard us talk in, in a work session recently. We had an update from the Port of Virginia just a few weeks ago, and now that the Panama Canal has opened, um, Portsmouth got its first Panamax ship uh, last Saturday, and uh, the city manager, um, Councilman Moody and I, along with uh, two folks from the Port Authority, donned our steel toe shoes and hard hats and went aboard the K-Line Hanover Bridge at um, what is now Virginia International Gateway, which used to be called APM Terminals in Churchland. And we were welcomed aboard and had a nice presentation with a plaque to the um, captain. And we got a tour of the bridge. And uh, the engineer tried to show Dr. Patton how to run the ship. And uh, it was hot as Hades. And we made our way up a gangway that must have been three stories tall. Um, but, uh, and it was a really, really big ship. It was a, a fascinating couple of hours of life. That's, that's the... That's one of the best perks of being on the city council is those kinds of events. So that, that was a really, I say, and to look at the kind of commerce, there was another ship in port the same day, 
a typical national ship that we're all accustomed to seeing, and this one had almost twice as many containers uh, on board. So that's that's a lot of a lot of product coming to market. And I'll just say this 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 Panama Canal widening and opening is going to be a game changer here for Hampton Roads, and we need to make sure that that we have positioned ourselves in such a way for it to be a positive impact and not a negative. Uh, there's going to be a lot of a lot of moving parts going on around here the next few years dealing with moving commerce and uh, and potential businesses coming to the region whether it's in Portsmouth or here in Hampton Roads for opening up distribution centers and all those types of things that will that will grow from this this expansion here so uh, stay tuned Mr. Moody well to expound on that in addition to the ship uh, being in port, uh, we also found out the port is going to be expanding, which was the original plan. And the good thing is they'll be adding cranes, and those cranes cost uh, they're taxable quite a, quite a bit of money, and they're a taxable, as the mayor said, uh, a real estate tax. Plus, they're going to be adding a, a lot of high tech uh, equipment there to facilitate the loading of the containers on rail cars and that equipment is also ta taxable so uh, it's something in it for all of us that we can take uh, delight in okay. thank you mayor all right, very good all right let me uh, lastly just say I mentioned earlier about um, uh, Hillary Clinton being the first female nominee from a major political party to be uh, nominated as a presidential candidate. I also want to say that our delegation here in Portsmouth and Hampton Roads has been very visible uh, on all of the national channels. I've seen uh, Ms. Morrison, Senator Lucas, I've seen uh, Matthew James. As a matter of fact, I saw Ms. Morrison and Ms. Lucas dancing to Boys to Men, and uh, um, I saw Delegate Lionel Spruill, the governor, the uh, lieutenant governor. And Virginia, uh, I don't know if you've watched it, Virginia has a front row seat this year right just to the right of the podium. That may have something to do with uh, uh, some of the Tim Kaine being <laughs> the uh, uh, vice presidential uh, nominee. But again, it's great seeing our delegation out uh, representing not only uh, Portsmouth but Hampton Roads. And so uh, we wish them a safe journey back home. Dr. Patton. Um, if I may, uh, the ship left Saturday, Saturday before last, and uh, there are 37 um, crew members, including the uh, captain, and right now they're still out on the seas, and they will arrive in Singapore on August the 18th. And when we were talking about just how being out there, they see nothing, they hear nothing, just the ocean and traveling. Well, it was a great experience. Sounds like council. They see nothing and hear nothing. Okay, <laughs> okay thank you. Madam Clerk. And, and know nothing, right? 16 240, report on pending items. And we have none this evening. 16 241, non agenda speakers. Our first speaker is Mr. Michael Thornton. I'm Mike Thornton of Brighton. The black sails of the Scarborough fly high in Portsmouth tonight. We can make this port profitable. Neither Bob McDonald nor Charles Vane can hinder our vision of a unified and enlightened Portsmouth. I've listened to residents voice their concerns and witnessed reporters get driven away only because they wanted another perspective. That rookie mistake gives the impression somebody's hiding something. Three years experience in retail won't get me a job in my own neighborhood. I'm weary of approaching strangers. When I walk into a store, no, I have valuable experience and I'm not a shoplifter. About a year ago, several patrol cars responded to a frightened call about a 300 pound man wielding a machete. Pretty uncommon to see anyone my age improving the appearance of the community. The double-sided blade isn't that sharp, but it hacks through thorns and cuts through branches better than pruning shears. Cleaning up neglected, forsaken wilderness and empty lots can be construed as trespassing. The cops asked me a few questions, 
checked me for weapons, and let me go. I took my tools and walked home. This happened near Marshall Landing. My cleaning is scarier than gunshots. I blame food stamps for all the litter on the ground. We pay people to pollute. An old futon mattress has been laying in a ditch with lots of other garbage for months. Landowners who let their land become junky jungles need to be held accountable. A few years ago, a tree in an empty lot crashed into my neighbor's backyard and it's still there and growing. Someone should clean that up for them. That's what happens when profiteers buy up land in neighborhoods they don't live in. Overpriced rental property is a means of disenfranchising and milking the poor. Instead of ripping off tenants, we need to help them own property. Improving curb appeal is as easy as building sidewalks around all residential blocks. Build more stores and restaurants on Portsmouth Boulevard if you want to impress people who are passing through on their way from Suffolk to Norfolk. After Victory Crossing, there is very little except the shipyard. All right, that's all I wrote. Thanks for letting me speak. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Good night. Yes, sir. And our final speaker for tonight is Ms. Antoinette Franklin. Good evening, Council. Um, I'd like to thank you for um, letting me be on the advisory board through Behavior Health Care. I once was a client, and um, I think by me being a former client, I can bring more ideas to those that have the degrees. I sit in a meeting with them. I declare I didn't know what they was talking about, but I sit and listen. I'm in a learning process, and that's what I want to do. The city of Portsmouth needs more unity. I don't understand a lot of things that's going on. I watch the news. I've been to a few of the protests. I sit back and listen. A house that is divided will not stand. If it's more unity around here, it doesn't matter if it's black, white, purple, whatever it may be. Please try to unite the city of Portsmouth you got small kids growing up cussing, fussing, want to play with guns, shooting this and that. Kids are getting hurt. I don't understand it. And I'm trying to learn things that's going on. I've been living here 43 years. I came from New York. If you could live in New York, you could live anywhere. But I didn't know about a lot of the violence up there. Here I've seen so many things come and go. So much is going on all at one time. And these things are written in the Bible. Rumors of wars, people going against each other. Uh, and one more thing, uh, I don't know who does, how to go about finding out who does the paving on roads. The street of Lansing Avenue from Portsmouth Boulevard, maybe two and a half blocks down. They paved it. It's a man, uh, the cover of a manhole sitting up right beside the manhole. It's a large dip. When you come down Portsmouth Boulevard, you almost, you, your car jiggles or something. Uh, can somebody tell me who can go back and finish repairing that street? It's raggedy. You're going to tear your car up. Those that have cars, it's, it's not a good idea. With that, I pass. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your uh, volunteering on the boards and commissions and working with the behavior health. We just got a report tonight and our work session from the director, and she did an outstanding job highlighting all of the services that they offer and the turnaround that's occurring in her department. And so thank you for being part of that. And I'm sure with your experience, you can add value to that discussion, whether you have a degree or not. And that's what makes us great. We have all people working together. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Moody. Well, Mayor, you said uh, about what I was going to say to Ms. Franklin. She doesn't speak uh, here very often, but when she does, I always appreciate her, her testimony. And someone who's 
uh, not only uh, uh, talks it, but has walked it and lived it and overcome it uh, is a testimony to all of us and uh, your inspiration to a lot of people. And I just wanted to let you know that and I always appreciate what you had to say. Thank you for being here. Well done, Mr. Moody. Uh, Dr. Whitaker. Yes, um, Dr. Patton, is someone going to get with Ms. Franklin on yes. this? Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. All minds clear. All right. We're adjourned. Good night.